Here's what I think about this phone after a month of daily use. For the battery, it lasts me about three to four days, which is expected given the size and processor speed. Plus, I increased the screen refresh to 120 hertz full time. I tried it on 60 hertz full time to see if it gives me any more battery life, but it didn't seem to make much of a difference. Maybe you could get like an extra half day or a few hours, but I would rather have it running at 120 hertz so I'm using what I paid for. I switched it back to 120 hertz for now and I'm using it full time and I don't have any battery anxiety at all. The reverse wireless charging feature on this Ulephone barely works. It works sometimes, but most of the time I have a lot of trouble getting something to start charging. It was the same issue with my Power Armor 13. I just figured it was defective, but since I really rarely use this feature, it didn't really bother me. But there were certain times when my friends with iPhones, they don't have enough charge to last through even half the day and they need a charger. So I would offer them to reverse charge it if they have the iPhone with the wireless charging. So it's kind of nice to have it around but I wish Ulephone would make it so that it works more consistently. Another issue I've encountered is that the screen brightness auto adjustment, the adaptive brightness control, doesn't learn from my settings. You're supposed to be able to adjust the settings and it should learn from what you've adjusted so that after a few adjustments it's more calibrated to your liking. Based on this screen's brightness levels, I kind of need it around 30% even in pitch black dark rooms where there's uh, no light or barely any light but it constantly sets it back to near zero percent whenever there's no light no matter how many times I move the slider to 30 percent it might hold it for one or two screen ons but later on in the day it just goes back to zero percent as if the calibration doesn't stick I've had a few MediaTek based phones that have this issue such as the Blackview 9800 and the Unihertz Titan, but Unihertz fixed the Titan adaptive screen issue with a patch after people complained about it on the forum. But the Unihertz Titan Slim still has this issue and I've installed YAAB, yet another auto brightness app to just work around the issue because these phones just don't get updated and I don't expect it to be. For the fingerprint scanner, it's still fast and responsive unlike my past Ulephone experience with the Power Armor 13 where it works great initially and as time goes by, it responds slower and slower. But this one, even after over a month of use, it's still fast. I can count on it to unlock my phone almost every single time. I also have face unlock set up so it unlocks almost instantly every time unless I'm holding at a weird angle. So the fingerprint scanner is working very well. For those that use Android Auto, it does work fine. I've paired it to multiple devices, three actually, and they all work fine. It's not, it's not slow, it's not buggy, or it doesn't disconnect. So no problems here. Even though I said earlier I don't expect these phones to get updates because the Power Armor 13 never got any updates, my Blackview 9800 never got any updates, and it's just the nature of the beast with these type of phones but surprisingly this power armor 19 got two over there updates even though they didn't fix any of the issues that I've encountered such as the poor quality low light camera or the auto brightness calibration but they did update the phone twice I noticed that the Google Play system updated to January 2023 on the first update and then I got an update in March which brought the Google Play system update up to February 2023 the security patch though is still November 20 2022. So after a month of use, I ended up really liking this phone despite the initial disappointment with the camera performance, especially given that it's touted as 108 megapixels. I now believe that that's a gimmick because the next level down is only 12 megapixels. What happened to in between? Maybe I just want 50 or 60, but it only goes down to 12. So I took a picture of some text from far away with 12 and 108 megapixels just to compare. Zooming in, you can't see any more detail. 12 megapixels or 108 megapixels, I still can't read the small text. So the detail is not there, although the file size and the actual pixels are there. Despite these flaws, I found that to be a right size phone for me, even though it's on the little bit of a heavier side, but that's how I usually like my phones. I never have battery anxiety and I don't feel like I need to be careful with it as if it was some super expensive fragile piece of art. There were times when I was tempted to go back to the Power Armor 13 just because of the extra day or two of battery life and better night picture taking, 
but the larger size and bulk of it kept me holding on to the more right sized Power Armor 19 instead. I think I'll be using this for a few months until something better comes along.